This is John Cullo with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm going to reveal probably a brand new fruit that you guys may not be aware of that you can now get shipped directly to you, most states in the United States anyways, except for maybe Hawaii and maybe California. Um, and I got a new shipment from Miami Fruit. My other videos from Miami Fruit have been hits. Actually, check them out down below. Check out the soursop I got a video. Check out the, you know, sprouted coconuts, which are totally amazing. Um, you know, I try to buy as much fruit as I can get locally, and right now I'm eating pineapple guavas, persimmons, I have uh, so I just finished up some dragon fruits, I got cactus fruits, I got apples, some oranges, I think those are all like the, oh, grapes, I got a lot of grapes, basic stuff right now. So when you're having a hankering for something a little bit different, right, hey, check out Mammy Fruit, they'll ship it directly to you guys. Now they are a little bit pricey, you know, so it's not something you should do it all the time unless you're like a millionaire and have just disposable income but for an occasional treat I think it's definitely amazing and make sure you guys try their freeze-dried fruit that is one of a kind so here is the box it came Federal Express like literally two days service and uh, let's open it up on the camera for you guys to see what's up normally they pack it pretty good in an outer brown box and an inner box so this box is a little bit damaged to me so you know hopefully the fruit inside is all right they didn't look like they took as much care as they normally do uh, when shipping me a box so we'll see what happens so opening this up all right inside here there's no double box basically you, you see what you get whoa everything's falling out here uh, oh they have a nice flyer thank you for Miami fruits that's cool um, they should probably have some fruit instructions for people that are not versed in fruit <laughs> on the fruit that's uh, being shipped to people and so inside here looks like we got some black sapotes or also called black persimmons maybe like in Hawaii or basically chocolate pudding fruit yes these fruits are like a chocolate pudding when they're completely ripe but Miami fruit knows better they're not going to ship ripe fruit to you guys because in a box especially that's not a double box um, will get damaged so this one's actually a uh, like a nice uh, like light green color so when it's like this color it may take 10 days to two weeks to ripen up you can't just like bite into this and eat it it's going to be so astringent it's like eating an unripe high chia persimmon all right luckily at least they have used these little um, padding materials and they basically padded each fruit individually so that they do not get bruised in transit so I think what I'm going to do to save you guys some time we're just going to go ahead and unbox all this fruit here and I'll show you guys actually what came and maybe we'll talk to you guys more about the uh, black sapote or uh, chocolate pudding fruit all right, so I pretty much got all the sapotes out of the box. That's pretty much the empty box there. And wow, man, look at this. I got like a whole bunch of fruit here. Let me count, count them up here all, all for you guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Hey, that's my lucky number. 33 chocolate sapote fruits. Now all these fruits are, <laughs> are rock hard. It's kind of like an avocado, right? If you buy avocado hard, you know, in most cases they're going to soften up for you and get ripe. Um, unlike avocados where you guys don't want to just let these guys give the general pressure. You guys really want these to be super soft before you eat them. Otherwise it's going to be a terrible experience. So now I, maybe I'll share with you guys some tips on how I'm going to get these guys to ripen for me. Um, slowly and moderately and um, and I guess uh, yeah let's do that next all right so now I want to show you guys actually how I ripen my fruit super simple super easy doesn't take rock science right basically I like to use these boxes here uh, if you go to Costco or Sam's Club or even like a local you know supermarket they'll have these boxes that the produce is shipped in I like the ones that tomatoes usually come in or you know the berries strawberries and uh, blueberries, raspberries, they come in little trays like this. And these are nice trays. The reason why I like these trays is because if you, ever, if you have any fruit leakage, if the fruit leaks and then gets on here basically, at that point I break the box down and, and, and recycle it and then I just get another one. So there's basically no cleaning involved. Also this allows me to basically easily, you know, transport and I could lift this whole tray up, you know, easily and move it. It also allows me to easily do single layer and, and see all my fruit. So here is actually a California grown persimmons, of which actually these guys are close, closely related to persimmons actually. Um, 
the high chias, and this box used to be full, even more than full, and I've been basically letting these ripen. And the way I let them ripen is basically I just put them in a, a warmer room in my house. I don't put them in like, you know, the coldest place, something, somewhere where it's not super hot either. You know, maybe if, you're, if you keep your house cold like I do, uh, put it on top of your fridge, it might be a little bit warmer there. Um, to let them ripen up and make sure, don't forget about them, check them every day, I come and check these guys out, you know, once every day or two to see where they're at, you know, and especially on the persimmons and on the black sapotes, I want, I would rather them be, you know, more soft than less soft, right? Um, and don't be alarmed, you know, if you guys get some fruits that are like, man, John, I got ripped off, man, I got some that are like super small and I got some that are super large, why can't they send me all super large ones? Well, here's the thing. Much like many fruits out there, there's many different cultivars or cultivated varieties of fruits. This one might actually be super sweet, whereas this large one might not be. And, you know, not in all cases will this small one develop into a large one because this could just be the variety that is a small one. And, you know, I would encourage Miami Fruit to label the varieties they are shipping to people so that people know if there is more or less than one variety. So people could request like, hey, I want the small ones because they tasted better than the large ones, right? And, uh, and... So yeah, so like all these are hard, so basically I'm just going to set these in the box, just like single file, and uh, arrange them, and then I'm just going to set them aside and let them ripen up. So I guess probably the next time you see me, we'll be coming back with this very box that has been uh, fully ripened, <laughs> and we'll show you guys, and we'll open up actually uh, chocolate pudding fruit and show you guys actually how I like to use them. All right, so now I'm back, and it's been actually about two weeks since I put these sapotes in this box. I've been eating some of the persimmons, and these sapotes have been ripening up. So about two weeks, 14 days, they could ripen in a week, two weeks, depending on your temperatures in your home or where you're ripening them. This, these stayed in um, my house here that I'm not, I don't heat in the winter time, <laughs> kind of frugal. And it's been about 65 degrees. Uh, maybe a little bit warmer, a little bit colder, but not, not too much. It's pretty constant. And so these have been ripening up. So as you guys can see, some are still as green as ever. And, you know, they haven't really changed. But at the same time, you can see some of them are actually ripening up. So, like, this is probably the most ripe here. This one I probably could have got, like, a couple days ago. It's, like, completely, like, turned black. You know, how you can tell if it's ripe is you want to take your finger and put a dent in it, right? If the dent sticks and it doesn't pop out then you know it's totally ripe, right? And, uh, you know, so we got some of the fat round ones ripe, and then we have, this is more the tall skinny ones that are ripe as well. So I'm going to pick out maybe the couple ripest ones. I want to make sure they're completely ripe. You know, much like the uh, high chia persimmons, you really don't want to eat these guys unripe. They're way better when they're ripe, all right? And sometimes they get a bit wrinkled. Now, you know, like, these are in different stages of ripeness. So, like, if you guys look at this one, and like maybe like an unripe one, you guys could see green, it goes to this. This one, I mean, it's it's not, it's still kind of puffing out a little bit, but it's not nearly as ripe as this guy. I wouldn't eat it when it's like this, I'd let them go a little bit further. And so let's see if I could t find one that's a little bit further along. So maybe this guy's a little bit further along, you guys see the difference in the color. This is still kind of greenish, this is kind of turning, you know, greenish slash black. Plus if you guys were here to feel it, it's definitely a lot softer, all right? So uh, that guy's pretty ripe. Uh, this guy's pretty ripe too. Nice uh, solid black spot there. I mean, I got a whole bunch of these to eat, man. It's definitely not funny now. I like to always like, you know, have all the unripe ones on one side of the box, and then I'll have the ripest ones, you know, on uh, on one side of the box here, so I could like select them uh, for easy eating later. This guy's probably pretty ripe too. All right, so. What I want to do now for you guys is actually just go ahead and show you guys actually what it looks like uh, for a ripe fruit. Um, we're just going to go ahead and cut it open in half. Maybe we'll take actually the uh, ripest one here. All right, so we've cut all the way around the seeds. And uh, wow, look at that. It's coming apart really nicely. All right. You guys see that? It's like dark, deep, rich chocolate. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of Instagram pictures. If you're not following me on Instagram, uh, Instagram.com slash growing your greens link is down below check it out for some of the pictures that I'll be taking right now before I come back at you and actually taste test it so next what I want to do for you guys is actually go ahead and taste test this fruit now before I do I want to let you guys know a little bit more information about the chocolate so pote fruit that I looked up online actually 
uh, you know, there are actually more antioxidants in here and uh, polyphenols and whatnot than like say mangoes. So these are more nutritious than mangoes in terms of antioxidant power. I want to encourage you guys to eat high antioxidant fruits. One of the reasons why I believe this is so is because of the deep, rich, literally brown, black flesh in there. I want you guys to eat really deep, rich, pigmented fruits such as the black sapote or uh, blackberries or even the blueberries, right? Now, the other reason why I really like this fruit is because this is not like a super sweet fruit. I mean, if you guys have had like a ripe, like, hychia persimmon, you guys know how sweet these guys could be, right? Uh, but the black sapotes, which, you know, on some levels is kind of related to the persimmon, um, is totally not necessarily a sweet fruit. You're not going to get a blast of sweetness, you know, it tastes really neutral and mild. Uh, some cultivars taste sweeter than others, so that's why I'm thinking, like, you know, this cultivar, which is the long, tall ones, remember you guys saw those? They're going to be probably sweeter than the, like, really super huge, big, fat ones. So, I guess without further ado, let me go ahead and take a scooper full of each one. So, this is the big, fat one here. A little more round. And this is what it looks I mean, it literally just looks like chocolate pudding. You know, but this is natural, grown in a tree, nothing added. So, we're going to go ahead and taste this. Mmm. So, I mean, the consistency is like actually one of those pudding in a cup. Have you ever had those? I had those when I was a kid. I mean, it's not like, it's like not like super drippy, like an orange is super drippy. This is like more of a firm fruit. Think like maybe a super ripe avocado that's like guacamole style. It's kind of like this texture, you know, it's the most similar thing I could think of that's kind of common. And once again, not super sweet. It'd be really interesting to bricks test this, but, you know, it's hard to bricks test a fruit that's not like a whole lot of liquid. All right. So next, let's go ahead and uh, try one of these more uh, tall uh, fruits here. And uh, I don't personally eat the skin of these fruits. I just uh, dig out the uh, rich inside. Now, the rich inside of this looks a lot more deep, rich black. And how you guys know if you actually got a good chocolate sapote or not, if it's like a more kind of coffee color or lighter on the inside, it's likely that your fruit was picked too early. Um, you know, this one's actually nice, deep, rich, and black, the, the, the tall ones. Mm. But to my taste buds, I mean, it's not any sweeter. It has a little bit different flavor, but actually I think overall, I prefer these uh, big fat ones instead. Uh, like a tad sweeter, but these by no means are a sweet fruit. If I had to compare it to something, actually, uh, the big ones are way better. I mean, think of like the a sweetness of a blueberry. I mean, it doesn't taste like blueberry, but think of a sweetness of a blueberry. Not like a super ripe blueberry, but just like an average blueberry that you'd get at the store, because I was actually just eating some earlier today. That's what this tastes like. It's like it's a tad sweet, but it's mostly just like for the texture and the deep, rich black pigments, all right? I mean, these fruits are pretty good to eat out of hand, especially if you've never had them before, but make sure they ripen up properly like I showed you guys. But let me go ahead and show you guys next, actually. I'm going to make my favorite dessert, my favorite recipe to use the blacks of pota in that is totally out of this world. All right, so now I want to share with you guys my favorite way to use the blacks of potes or uh, chocolate sapotes, whatever your chocolate, you know, pudding fruit, whatever you guys want to call them, is actually to make a recipe with them. You know, and you know, there's many recipes online. They may add sugar and all kinds of other processed garbage, junk foods, highly processed foods. I'm going to make you guys actually a recipe that actually tastes amazing using basically, for the most part, real fruits. <laughs> okay? So, uh, what we're going to do is we have a blender here, and actually, I don't have any old blender. I have a vacuum blender. So, this is actually the TriVest Dyna Pro vacuum blender. And if you are doing this recipe, I do encourage you guys to use a vacuum blender. Because what you guys don't understand, if you guys never used a vacuum blender, is when you blend fats, like we will be blending in a vacuum blender, it really makes a nice fluffy, like, texture. So this would be like one, this is going to be one amazing mousse with an amazing mouthfeel, and I wish you guys were here to try it, alright? Previously, I've done this recipe in Hawaii with uh, the chocolate, or uh, black sapotes with dates, vanilla bean, a little bit of coconut water, and vanilla bean. And you could do that recipe, but today I'm doing it a little bit differently because I always like to switch it up 
Today what we'll be doing is we'll be doing a chocolate zapote, uh, dates, uh, avocado for the fat, and then we actually we got one vanilla bean, and then for the liquid we got one cup of coconut water. So if you don't have coconut water, oh actually this is sugar cane juice, sorry. Um, we're using sugar cane juice uh, infused with a little bit of lemon. If you're not lucky enough to have fresh pressed sugar cane juice, because uh, sugar cane juice can, um, is, a, is in the grass family, actually it's a grass, can absorb up to 90 different uh, trace minerals, also has natural sweetener from uh, Mother Earth or from the sugar cane, and it actually has less sugar in it than orange juice, which actually you could also use in this recipe, but then you'd have more orange juice flavor. Um, you could use coconut water, right? I use young coconut water and then young coconut meat. Now we're putting in the sugar cane juice first, and then basically we're using the dates, and so the dates will add the sweetness because, as I said, the chocolate sapote basically has no sweetness. And then just to make sure it gets blended up properly, we're just going to go ahead and uh, chop our vanilla up into little pieces so the blender has an easier time uh, breaking it all down. Alright, so we got the vanilla bean added, and what I'll be doing today is actually I'll be doing what's called sequential blending. So we could actually add all the ingredients and then just blend it up, but because I want to really get the dates liquefied into the liquid and I want the chocolate sapote and the avocado to blend better, uh, we're just going to go ahead and blend up the liquid with the dates first and then we're going to come back and we're going to go ahead and add the uh, chocolate sapote and the avocado. So the first step is uh, once we got everything in the container we're going to go ahead and put a vacuum on it. Uh, what this little pump does it actually sucks out all the oxygen out of the container. So what this does is this blends in an oxygen deprived environment which means you're going to have you're going to have less oxidative damage to whatever you're blending. You know, in the case of blueberries, did you know you're losing two and a half times of the polyphenols uh, when blending in a standard like Vitamix versus when you vacuum blend in any vacuum blender, basically? Same thing. I'm a little bit concerned about the sugar cane juice, which is highly volatile, can basically go bad pretty quick due to oxidative damage. So I'm glad I'm actually sucking out the vacuum and we'll be blending this under vacuum. I use a vacuum letter pretty much exclusively whenever I blend anything at home. If I'm traveling, I have a travel vacuum blender, but unfortunately if I'm at a friend's house, I don't have a vacuum blender and then I miss it a lot. Anyways, let's go ahead and wait for this uh, vacuum to be pulled and we'll come back at you and uh, blend this stuff up. Alright, so we got a vacuum pulled. We're going to go ahead and now just uh, blend this up on high. Alright, now we have a nice deep rich uh, creamy, caramel colored um, sugar cane date vanilla mix. We're going to go ahead and pull the vacuum off. You can hear it come out and now we can go ahead and take the carafe top off and we're going to go ahead and add in our avocado and our black sapote. So um, here's the thing, right? If you want to get the right consistency and have it not be too like, uh, you know, watery, you want to add approximately twice as much material as the liquid. So currently we have about 8, 10, about 10 ounces of uh, liquid and we're just going to go ahead and basically add it up to about 20 ounces of uh, fruit now. And so basically what we're going to do is we got one avocado that I've uh, sliced up into little pieces here. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, dunk that in. And we're going to go ahead and dunk the other half of the avocado in. And now I have the arduous test. <laughs> Uh, basically uh, scooping out all the uh, black sapote off the skin and dropping it in. So this is going to take me a little bit. We're going to come back at you uh, pretty much when I got all this done. Alright, so I think I got about the last bit of black sapote. That definitely uh, took a little bit of time. Make sure you lick, mm. lick the spoon. That's definitely good stuff. And this stuff gets kind of messy. Alright, so let's see if we shake that down. Looks like I'm up to like 22, 20, maybe 24, uh, so that's quite good. I think that should be about double, so this should turn out to be a nice, excellent uh, combination here. So let's go ahead and uh, put our lid back on, and let's go ahead and pull the vacuum. All right, we got a good vacuum on there. Let's go ahead and pull that vacuum pump off, and let's go blend it up. Uh, this doesn't have to be on high. I'd probably just put it on low just to get it agitated, and I might do it on high just to get, get a little more fluff. Uh, because it is under vacuum. All right, that's a super thick mixture there. Now, I only recommend you guys do this in a vacuum blender. 
And uh, let's go ahead and pull the vacuum off. And look at the level. It's going to sink down. So you get actually a finer blend uh, under vacuum than without. Also, your mixture will store better longer uh, because you're not doing all the oxidative damage. Now look at that mixture in there. This is a really nice mixture. We're just going to go ahead. I'm not going to eat all this. So I'm going to go ahead and properly store it. So we're just going to go ahead and pour it out into like a 16 ounce mason jar, like a bunch of it. Because I'm going to store it for later, and I'll show you guys actually how to store this stuff. This is a nice uh, mousse uh, pudding style consistency. Once again, pretty much all fruit. Wow, that's off the hook. Oh my god. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sample some out for you. Mm. It's really quite good. I think I kind of prefer this recipe though with the coconut meat and the coconut water. The young coconut meat, young coconut water. I mean this came out alright. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely go with the coconut. But uh, nonetheless, this is avocado and black sapote. I gotta take a little bit more uh, scoop off this here. Mm. Now to store this, now I gotta explain the texture to you. The texture is like really light and fluffy. It's actually quite nice. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put our uh, top on our mason jar and then we're just basically just going to suck out a vacuum on it So now we're going to store it under vacuum so it does not oxidize further under storage as you guys know Avocados like have a big tendency to turn brown You know if you just cut it open and put it in your fridge or you make guacamole So this is like a, you know uh, basically a sweet guacamole although it doesn't have a whole lot of avocado in there This is stored under vacuum No problem to store this for three days in the fridge without any issue, and that being said, it's not going to last that long or at my house uh, <laughs> with me eating it. Mm. So this is my dessert tonight. It's absolutely amazing, absolutely delicious. Now if you guys want to source your own black sapotes, you guys can now do that. This is quite a rare fruit, only comes around one time a year, um, you know, usually maybe like November maybe end of November, December, January, February, maybe March if you're lucky. But the season is on now, and I've rarely, I don't think I've ever seen this for sale at a store. Like, I have to go to Hawaii or go down to South Florida to find it. But now, thanks to Miami Fruit, you guys can get it shipped directly to you, just like you guys saw me open the box earlier in this episode. You know, they're all nice and hard, uh, protected in those little foam cushion things so they don't get damaged. And that's the best way to ship these guys. If you guys ship them like this, you guys would get a box of mush, right? I gotta say that so far, all the ones that have ripened up have ripened up superbly for me. Um, you know, I still got a whole bunch more that's gonna ripen up. And uh, if you guys wanna get them, please be sure to visit Miami Fruit. And I'll put a link down below. And make sure you use the coupon code OKRAW. OK, uh, for a small discount, so you guys could save a little bit. Miami Fruit, uh, you know, does uh, get kind of spendy there, uh, but I think it's definitely worth it, you know, on a once an occasional treat, or unless you're a millionaire, you can get it all the time, um, you know, for some fruits that you haven't experienced before. Now, once again, I'm telling you guys, this is not a sweet fruit by any means. It looks super cool. It has a really nice consistency, but you really got to add some kind of dates or some kind of sweetener, you know, to, to ramp it up to really make it taste good if you if you like sweet fruits, right? If you just like, you know, I could eat just out of hand. I, I don't need to really add anything to eat these guys and enjoy them. And actually, some of the other ones that I got, I'm actually going to freeze dry them because that's going to probably be pretty insane. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode with the Black Zapote and Miami Fruit Box this time, hey, please be sure you give me a thumbs up. That only creates me to do more off the wall, crazy videos with uh, boxes I get from Miami Fruit. Be sure to check also down below some links to other videos I've done with Miami Fruits. Um, earlier, well, late last year, with the sprouted coconuts as well as the sour sops. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes that come out every five to seven days, 
You never know where I'll show up or what new fruit or vegetable or uh, raw food uh, teachings I'll be sharing with you guys so you guys can empower yourself to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables the healthiest way possible. Um, also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge or 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to teaching you guys uh, how to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables and more importantly, why to do it uh, the best way possible. All right, so uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time, and until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.